You're watching the Harley Davidson Wizard YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Stick around. All right, here we go. We're starting part two. This is the 114 high compression bolt on kit. And that is what a stock 107 piston looks like on a 114 big bore cylinder. We're going to start with getting everything organized and I like to lay it all out on the table exactly the way that it's going to be on the motorcycle in the exact orientation. So the front cylinder where the front cylinder is going to be, the rear cylinder where the rear cylinder is going to be. You can see that the cylinders are marked obviously and it's easy to set up the cylinders in the correct orientation because it has a large cutout for the push rod tubes and the exhaust flanges and the fins are tapered where they come together in the V. The Scrimmage Eagle pistons that we're using today they have a little bit of a pop-up that's going to give us an extra compression there and they have little arrows on them. In this setup with Scrimmage Eagle pistons the arrows point forward towards the front of the motorcycle. You want to make sure that you read the instructions that come with your pistons. Some aftermarket pistons come with arrows pointing towards the camshaft. Not that you could get those pistons pointing forward, but it comes with instructions, so you might as well read them. I like putting one wrist pin C-clip in while it's sitting here on the bench, specifically on the lifter side. And then that way I'm going to assemble the cylinders with the pistons and the rings and everything, and the wrist pin, and we're going to walk it over to the motorcycle as an assembly and then drop the piston down a little bit fully engage the wrist pin and the crankshaft and then we'll just have one wrist pin clip to put in and that's it so I keep the same scenario every time that I do this just to make it easy but that's the way that we're gonna get it set up one wrist pin clip in I'm using the Harley Davidson tool here because it makes it easier. On the motorcycle, I'm just going to be using a flathead screwdriver. But even while we're still here on the bench, you want to make sure that wrist pin clip is fully seated. So I still just go around with a little flathead screwdriver, make sure it's seated. We want to double check that the correct rings are in the correct numbered labeled little envelope. And also, before we can wet or oily or any type of uh, assembly lube on there, that we're familiar with any type of markings that are on the piston rings. On different type of rings, there's different type of markings. On this set, I believe the top ring has a little M. Uh, the center ring, I believe, can be installed either in either direction. And there typically aren't any, any markings on the oil control ring, but on the oil control ring spider where the two little ends ends meet together you want those little ends to meet pointing up but regardless the instructions tell you exactly what to look for so we're just double checking I like to start cleaning my cylinders by spraying them down with a little WD-40 that gets the bulk of any type of material that's left on the cylinder wall out of there and then I go through with just clean engine oil I do a little figure eight type motion to get any type of oil or honing debris that's left over to scrub that out of the cross hatch that's in there because that's how pistons stay lubricated is by oil sitting in the cross hatch and other crap sits in there too so you want to clean that out also you want to look down and clean the oil return hole that's in the cylinder that's how the majority of the oil drains out of the cylinder head is there's a passageway in the cylinder and then it runs all the way down into the bottom of the crankcase and in this one, in this cylinder, there was like some leftover machining stuff that got powder coated in there. So it's like a powder coated metal flake. So I just get a large flathead screwdriver, about the same size as this bore, obviously a little bit smaller. Go down and chip that little piece of extra poop out of there. And then we're going to go through and clean that hole out and just make sure that there isn't anything residual left in there. We're going to go through the front cylinder, do the exact same thing. We had already sprayed it out with WD-40, so now we're just using the clean engine oil. You want to make sure that you go through and get this thing fully cleaned out. 
because anything that's left in the little in the little grooves of the cross hatch that's going to be it's going to be scuffing up right against your brand new piston your brand new rings all right you want to go ahead and get a good sip of your diet mountain dew so the next step is we want to clean the piston rings as well just you don't know where they came from who else touched them whatever the deal was with them so we just do the same deal clean them up with some fresh engine oil make sure that your towel is or whatever it is that you're using is nice and clean and then this is good time just as you're going through the rings to double check especially if you got them from somebody else or like it's a pre-built kit from some aftermarket place just that if they had ground the rings that the end of the rings are square or there isn't a weird burr on it or anything that type of stuff will catch your towel usually and it's just some something to keep in mind so we're checking the ring end gap here the end gap is uh, it's specified on the information that comes with the pistons I'm doing the rear cylinder out of focus or out of view of the camera because I don't know how to use the stinking thing yet but it tells you and then we're going to be assembling the piston ring that's the the oil control ring spider and like I was saying where the two ends of that butt up you want that little point facing up I like to install the piston and rings 90 degrees away from each other and then the second and the top ring those end gaps to not be on a thrust surface so like uh, kind of pointing towards the intake manifold I guess that's an easy way to think about it the way that the reason that I do the 90 degrees away from each other is because I'm going to be installing the piston the piston rings and the cylinder by hand and that makes it easier I do a lot of double checking to make sure that whatever the markings or identification is on the rings that they're on the right way you know I, I I double check them before the rings are oiled I double check them after the rings are oiled and then I double check them again while the rings are on the piston as for assembly lubricant I like to use fresh fresh engine oil and then on heavy impact sur surfaces like the skirts of the piston or the wrist pin or uh, especially like in between Veltrain components where there's a, a lot of tension I like to use a the Scrimmon Eagle assembly lube because it's super thick but then, now that we have the piston all assembled and orientated correctly with the rings we're gonna put them in the cylinder as an assembly obviously so the the way that I do this is obviously the piston is smaller than the hole that you're gonna be putting it in so you put the piston in and the side that has the open end gap on it you put that into the hole first you know into the cylinder and then once you slide it down the rest of the piston ring will close up and then you just make sure that the next piston ring that that end gap slides into the cylinder first and then just keep on working your way around until you're all the way down Sometimes you'll have to jiggle the piston around a little bit, just rotate it in the bore slightly. I've always had great luck using this method. It's a whole lot easier than trying to hang over the motorcycle with the piston and the piston ring compressor and trying to slide the cylinder down. Uh, the reason that it works so easily is, is that the bottom of the Harley-Davidson cylinders or whoever cuts your cylinders, they put a taper on the, on the bottom of it so that naturally that's like a little built-in spring compressor itself so if you get somebody to cut your cylinders you do it aftermarket wise or whatever and they put a half-ass chamfer on it it makes it a pain in the butt but you're staring right at it while you're cleaning it so you know what you're going to be what you're going to be dealing with so here i figured out how the camera works you know that it only shows the video right in front of it so I got the cylinder lined up there we checked our end gap everything still looked good you would hope so since everything's all brand new here and we're getting our oil control ring spider in there 
and still you want the ends of that spider pointing upwards and the reason for that is because of the piston it has oil drain back holes drilled into that bottom oil ring and I've been told that the oil ring spider little fingers can get stuck in those in those holes and mess up the operation of the oil ring I haven't ever seen it happen but I was taking a course at Harley Davidson corporate for Scrimmin Eagle performance whatever they said it there it sounded like a good thing to know so I just implemented it into the regular operations and that's also what we're told to do is to use the Scrimmin Eagle assembly lube on the piston and the piston rings and all that business but that stuff is so thick it's it's like the thickest stuff I've ever used it's so stringy that Things that need to move around easily, like piston rings, I like to just use fresh oil on. Other stuff like cam lobes and oil pumps, especially oil pumps, I like to use something a lot thinner. And that's where, once we get to putting an oil pump together, we're going to use a different assembly lube for that. But same thing, we're just being careful, going slow. Again, you can use a piston ring compressor, whatever you want. I've, I, I just do it this way. Because I've done it like that hundreds of times. And I haven't ever had a problem with piston rings or whatever. The motion I'm using with my palm is extremely light. It's hard to tell in the video. But you don't need a hammer or a fist or anything. You're just you're pushing the piston in there only up against the friction of the piston rings. So Again, you want to clean everything up. Make sure that where it's going to contact your base gaskets that that's nice and clean and as we do the rest of the cleanup on the engine we're going to get our lifters all oiled up we're using the most expensive glass mason jar probably on the face of the planet this little tool is offered by gyms and it gives me a nice little funny feeling in my pants so i bought it but you just put your lifters in there and it has fresh oil in that mason jar a little hole in the top and you connect it to your vacuum bleeder and it'll suck all the air out of the lifters as far as if it's better than pumping them up by hand I don't know the service manual tells you to just leave the lifters submerged in oil for a period of time I've seen other people where they pump them up I still do that from time to time myself but sometimes I feel fancy, so I bought this jar. And it's just sitting there. And this video is going 300, 300% like normal speed. So usually I toss them in that jar, eat lunch, and then by the time I'm done with lunch, then they're done too. You can see how many bubbles are in there. It's really pretty crazy. So the Milwaukee 8 is a pretty big cylinder fit for the, the frame. So you get it in there, and then I'm just using the bottom of my dead below hammer. And again, we're just we're just tapping the cylinder out. We have the motorcycle in sixth gear, and we're controlling the position of the crankshaft with the rear wheel. And then we're just moving the piston down just enough so that the wrist pin can slide out. And then we can drop it down a little bit and then slide it in through the top of the crankshaft. There's such minimal clearance there to accidentally sliding out the oil ring, but if you do it right, it's a piece of cake. Then we're just going through, making sure, I guess it's trouble checking at this point, really, that the wrist pin clips in there. And we already did it by hand on the primary side, and that's it. I'm going to use a little tool that I made up. It's just out of old cylinder head bolts. And it, I had just a bunch of these little black spacers laying around that were slightly smaller. So I pressed them on the head bolts as cylinder hold down tools, I guess. Just making life easier. And you got to save up that money for the, the Jim's lifter tool. Here's a slightly different view of it happening for the front cylinder. And I got this tip about the pistons and putting them in by hand from 
from an old motorcycle technician that he used to build a whole lot of performance engines himself showed me that little trick and i've been using it ever since it's not like i came up with it myself and i saw this other guy do it on youtube where he could just do it with one fluid motion of his hand where it was crazy he just held the wrist pin and just clink just clunked it right right in the cylinder but however you do it again we're just popping that other wrist pin clip in Staring at it with the flashlight, making sure she's perfect. You want to be careful about sliding the spigot down into the engine case because you could really damage it if you if you whack it hard enough. You want to make sure that your pistons come up all the way to the top of the cylinder and obviously that they don't come out too far. And then spin the engine over a few times by hand, making sure that especially if you're using aftermarket cylinders and aftermarket pistons that your clearances and everything are good there. Well, actually you'd want to do that before you put the piston rings on the pistons, but whatever. I like using the Scrimmin Eagle assembly lube on the lifter bores. And then I put the lifters up from the bottom with all the lifter holes pointed in the same direction because that feels professional. And the Scrimmin Eagle assembly lube is so thick that it just holds the lifters right up in there. So you don't need any lifter tools. And the first few that I did, I, I pulled the lifter blocks off like you normally would for like a twin cam or whatever. And then I pulled the screw out for the little anti-rotation clip that's in there. It's different on a Milwaukee 8 than it is just about anything else. And the screws in there were in there just so friggin' almost bound up where it was it felt sketchy bringing the screws out so that's where i just i figured out i could put the lifters in from the bottom make my life a little bit easier save a step here we have the sns three gerotor oil pump it's a pretty nice little unit i like to go through and clean everything spray it down with a uh we call it brake cleaner but it's a i'm not exactly sure what it is it's multi-purpose -pur solvent it's pretty badass it's from worth but i go through take everything apart and then you'll see i'll probably step out of view spray the thing off i just want to make sure that there isn't any type of schmoo in there or grit or again you know if you don't make it yourself you don't know what type of questionable care it's been through but sns stuff is always really good at least in my experience but clean it and then this is this is assembly lube comes with the SNS oil pump and it's great stuff. I forget what the name of it is, but it's actually listed in the early twin cam service manuals as far as the engine engine assembly lube. But you just put it on a little bit where every you know where anything is going to touch something else. And I like using a thinner assembly lube here. Because ultimately, once we get the oil pump and the cam plate on the motorcycle, we're going to spin the engine over and use the pinion of the crankshaft to line up the oil pump. And if you have something thicker in there, especially like the Screaming Eagle assembly lube, it just doesn't line the oil pump up as, nice, as nicely as it does with a thinner assembly lube. And that's probably why the oil pump comes with it. It's because it's nice stuff. You just got to put a little bit in there. You don't want to put so much in there where you're like trying to pack the oil pump or anything. Because like I said, the next step is in lining the oil pump off of the engine crankshaft itself. So it's got to be in there freely enough where it can all move and spin and, and play nicely together. But then also just lubed up enough where nothing scratches or scuffs each other. Before I put the cam plate on. I like to line up the three gerotors a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier to slide over the end of the crankshaft. And then we're just putting the four bolts in loosely. Like I run them in and then I back them out just like a thread. That way nothing can come dislodged. But then we slide it all together over the end of the crankshaft as one component. 
So earlier, I already put thick assembly lube on the O-rings that go in the engine case and thin assembly lube on the camshaft. So that's already in the motorcycle and that's ready to go. That way, all, all we have to do is put some assembly lube on the bronze bushings in this cam plate. And then also, anywhere anything is going to rub up against each other, like on the back of the cam plate where it's ground out there for the camshaft. That way it makes it easy and we don't have to worry about any of the, any of the O-rings are falling off or falling out of place. And then we're just going to rotate the rear tire and that's going to help line up the gerotors and the oil pump. So the cam plate and the oil pump are all just going to slide right into the cam chest there. We won't need to use the screws to pull it in or anything because that would be crazy. Basically all the metal surfaces are touching themselves and then we're just putting the bolts in there to retain everything. The cam plate already has the, the guide on it to which bolts you put in first and then tighten down. I like to put all the bolts in so there's just a little bit of surface pressure on them and then rotate the engine over a little bit and then tighten the bolts down more just that way if there's any type of weird misalignment going on that's all accounted for torque them down obviously you'll see me using the torque torque wrench everywhere in the video because that's that's the way I roll and then as the engine's spinning or in its normal uh, clockwise rotation I'm also bringing those oil pump bolts up to torque so any type of run out that's on the main shaft is being accounted for in the tolerance of the oil pump I want to say the information that came from SNS with the oil pump recommended that it only be used on crankshafts with up to three and a half thousandths of run out we checked it earlier. I want to say it was between two and three. And that's it. That's exactly what you would normally expect, honestly. So we're looking pretty good. Now we're just checking the spacing of the camshaft gear. Those spacers are available in different thicknesses. And you can hold a straight, straight edge up there, feel it with a feeler gauge. But the differences of the spacers are ten thousandths. And after you do a, a whole shitload of them, you can you can honestly feel it with your thumb. So that's what we did. Actually, I, I checked it twice because it needed a shim two sizes up. And then we're using a new camshaft assembly hardware. It comes with a little red Loctite patch on it. It's cheap. It's nice to have and to know that it's right. Obviously, we lined up the timing marks on the crankshaft and the camshaft. So we got everything torqued in there. Our tensioner is in good shape. So we're reusing that guy. Got her in there. And that's about it. New gasket. Put the cam cover on. We'll probably wrap the video up here. Because it's getting long, I'm hungry, and I haven't talked this much in months. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.